law enforcement efforts, our national policies. I mean, all of these things, you know, I can't help but think that things are coming to a head in every dimension at every level. That's what it feels like, at least to me. Um, And so we have to, this is a time for us to really um, collectively unify around you know, not just a better vision of the future, but a beautiful vision of the future. Mm-hmm. Why can't we have beautiful? Mm-hmm. Why not dare to dream that? Mm-hmm. You know, mm. that's where I'm at these days. Well, it's, uh, that's a beautiful finish, but I want to bring it back to surfing yes. <laughs> because that that's uh, part of that beautiful, um, yes. beautiful vision. Um, and, you know, it's been interesting also to think about how the systemic legacy of racism also affects our, our waters, you know, um, whether it's uh, who has access to the beach, you know, communities that have been specifically built to keep people out through other mechanisms of parking and real estate. There's an awareness now in every aspect of our society, our culture, waking up to the realities of um, all the entitlements um, that enable them to do what they can do so easily. And I think one of those areas is the beach and is, you know, surfing and how we access it, you know, representation. And- yeah, I 100% agree with you. I think we have to just go and and claim that space mm-hmm. and, and yeah. make it for us because, you know, I mean, you and I have certainly had our share of run-ins, you know, at Long Beach. Mm-hmm. I can remember vividly um a time when we were surfing in the water with a bunch of older mm. white men who um, who were just absolutely disgusting. They were talking about their buddy who went on a surf trip to the DR and mm. he got a woman with the price of the room and oh. how they thought that was so great. And remember, you were ready to fight oh, them. God. I was like, who? Which one? Yeah. Oh. And I just think um, there is a lot to hear that, of, like you're in the water having your, horrible, your beautiful yeah. moment and then you got to hear this shit, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of toxic masculinity in the water still. Um, and I know there's also hostility coming toward, um, you know, old lady surfers like me or people who are new. Um, and there is that sort of surf, surf culture disdain for kooks and, and, people who just don't belong in the water. Um, But one of the things that I really um, love about how much surf culture is expanding these days is that we may not be able to expunge the toxicity, but Mm -hmm. if there are more of us out there, we can dilute that toxic masculinity Mm -hmm. so that it becomes insignificant. That's really the idea. It's like what the Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh always says about um, anger. You know, if you have a tiny drop of poison in a small glass Mm. of water, it could kill you. But if you add more water or bring the water to a lake and, you know, make it so that there's so much water and just a tiny bit of of poison, then Mm. it becomes non-lethal or even insignificant. And so I think Mm -hmm. about that a lot with regard to um, not just toxic masculinity uh, in surf culture, but also to um, really just being able to endure and withstand the pain and suffering that we see around us or experience ourselves in life when we're Mm -hmm. contemplating Mm -hmm. racial violence or climate destruction or extreme poverty, um, any of those things, it's really um, helpful for me at least to zoom out. And that's kind of where the meditation comes in to really zoom out. And so it's not that I am trying to suppress the pain, but I'm trying Mm -hmm. to expand my perspective so that Mm -hmm. the thing that's causing the pain is at least smaller within the larger whole. And that's why surfing is so good because we get in the water and we immediately feel that we're just so tiny. Even if the lineup Mm -hmm. is packed, we're still Mm -hmm. a few little (laughs) dots, you know, and, and like you and I have seen humpback whales out there at Rockaway and, you know, Mm -hmm. we just 
dolphins having yeah, sex oh, next yeah, to us. Scary, actually. <laughs> uh, that, that was alarming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that, again, you know, surfing is just full of so many beautiful teachings for us. And one of them is surrendering to something that's much bigger than you. And it, it helps to sort of transcend your own um, egocentric worldview and your, tu- your tunnel vision, tunnel vision. And um, I think just perspective, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was the other day when we were in the water, I just kept wishing, I, I wish everyone, you know, everyone who's suffering in the world mm-hmm. right now could just have this experience mm-hmm. of being baptized anew every mm-hmm. time you, know, you set foot in the, in the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's like, you just, just washed away all the, all Mm. the pain is washed away, you know, and your soul just feels clean again. Mm. Well, I think I'm going to have to leave um, that as the last uh, sentiment here. This is really beautiful and very poignant. And um, I feel like that, whether we, you're poignant, I'm terrible. (laughs) <laughs> um, I don't even know why they let me do this, but, uh, I think, um, oh, no, you you know, I, I, I love hearing other people speak. I think that's what it is. And I always have so many thoughts going <laughs> all at once. Yeah. I mean, our conversations are, are pretty wide ranging, but yeah, I just want to say, um, you know, how much I appreciate you and, and how you've just really, um, you know, encouraged me to, go harder or to just be bold in moments when um, I might, my default might be to pull back a little bit too. Um, oh, you're somebody who inspires a lot of people in the water and outside oh, of the water. You. And you're a dear I, friend. So thanks I, for interviewing me. Yeah. I mean, I think the bottom line for me is um, the idea of taking up space. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, I, I know when I first started surfing, it was very, um, you know, I definitely had that aggro thing, but it, 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 I felt the compensation for the space. Like, I just felt like um, the kind of the way the lineup before, especially when it had a lot of men who are very aggro and old school, um, there was this idea of like, this space is ours. And, and it just would irk me to my core. Like, this is the ocean. This is nature. Like, how dare you? Again, colonizing this space, you know? And so for me, it, it, ha- it resonated on many levels in terms of like, you know, catch every wave. It also, you know, worked to my benefit because then I gave myself a reason to go get every wave. But, um, you, you know. You were the, 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 uh, the wave avenger. Oh, boy. Work, uh, fighting for justice. Oh, my Never. God. But I... I I think it was just the kook's excitement of, you know, catching up. Oh, like, was, oh my God. It's a, beautiful like thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to behold. Anyway, thank you so much, Jungwon, for sharing um, all your great stories and also all your work. I mean, no wonder you don't have time to catch waves. You're doing the important work out in the world. And, uh, it's, you know, thank you for that. Really amazing. And this uh, insight that you're able to share with us. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. So go shred and we'll talk talk (laughs) later. Hopefully this weekend. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.